Hi, my name is Adam Francis with Milo's Restoration, and today I've got a 80 style dresser that needs some refinishing. It's kind of cheap, but I'm going to make it look a little bit more modern, and I'm going to paint it with Benjamin Moore's commands uh, in Swiss coffee. So, what I'm doing here is just applying some paste wax to the drawer slides to make them kind of slide better. They were kind of tough. This is my drawer masking technique. I just used 24 inch plastic with the blue painter's tape on it. I stretch it across the drawer and I use some frog tape to kind of hold it down. This is BIN shellac based primer here I'm spraying. I'm using my cap spray to you do this. I don't really use it that often anymore actually because I have an Apollo and I have a few other sprayers too. But it's definitely the sprayer to buy if you really want something that's powerful. It's been the old kind of trusty workhorse of my painting business and I've really just gone to it whenever I need to spray something that it requires minimal thinning or I know it's going to be a really messy process. So it's a great gun. I've got some issues with the, the guns themselves, but the turbine unit is very powerful and it's definitely the strongest one on the market. So I've got some DAP ultra lightweight spackle here and I'm just taking it and kind of filling in some of the superficial holes. They're not very deep and so I'm going to use spackling for them. Bondo is very good to use for major repairs but the kind of issue with it is that it tends to be very hard to sand in the sense that while it sands well, it doesn't sand as easily as spackling so you get a more level surface. So here I'm just sanding everything, including the spackling, with um, a surf prep sander. And I really like surf prep sanders for paint prep, for people who are wondering about sanders. I have these and I have a Merca sander as well. 
I really prefer Merca sanders for woodworking, but for paint prep and in between coats and that kind of work, I, I like surf prep. I think that they make a pretty good sander for a specific purpose. So I'm just using denatured alcohol to clean off the hardware. If you're going to use the solvent, just be careful and follow every safety precaution that is necessary for that specific solvent. I'm using a color guard, I think it is. It's just a you know Krylon spray paint for the hardware. It really doesn't matter that much, honestly. They all perform about the same. I'm just mixing up some Benjamin Moore command here. I'm thinning it by 15%. This particular color is Swiss coffee. It's a great paint for furniture flippers because of the fact that it hardens like a urethane trim enamel, but it has a similar dry time to a water-based lacquer. For this first coat of uh, command, I'm using my Apollo HVLP sprayer. I've got a five stage and I've got a 1.0 on it in this clip. And that's way too small, but I accidentally left it in there and I forgot that I was spraying clear recently and was using a 1.0. So if you don't really know anything about HVLP tips, generally speaking, they follow a similar sizing pattern. So with thicker paints and trim enamels and stuff like that, you're generally going to be one of using a 1.8 or 1.5 or equivalent tip in whatever system you were on. For instance, the cap spray uses a different sizing for the needles and the nozzles, and their equivalent is like a 4 or a 5, where as in Graco uses a totally different one. So Apollo just uses the standard type system and they have a 1.5 with a V high solids cap and I'm pretty sure that's what I'm using here. Here I'm just giving everything a quick sanding with a 400 quid block and a worn out surf wrap sanding pad. The extent of sanding that I do between coats depends on how bad of a session I have with spraying. Sometimes I have really bad time, you know, just nat nature and other factors make things hard and I have to sand out a lot of imperfections in orange peel. But with this one, it went pretty well, so I didn't really have a whole lot of sanding to do. This is the second coat, and I've thinned it down a little bit more, but I usually save like the most thinning for the final coat because I want to make sure that it lays out really well. One thing to consider when you're painting is that, you know, if you're doing work for a client or something, you really want to try to paint in a controlled environment. I'm not in a booth right now. I have used one before and I have sprayed inside. But just depending on the circumstances, I sometimes spray different places. And if you're using just a turbine system and spraying or something outside, you want to try to bring everything inside as quickly as you can. So that'll have time to level out.
So this is the third and final code for the command. I thinned it by 15% and I actually did a quick hand sanding, but I didn't show that because it just really wasn't a whole lot. I think that this paint is pretty versatile, but I don't think that it weighs out as good as like a water-based lacquer would. And so I think for that reason, when I do furniture, I'll probably be sticking to Chem Aqua just because of the fact that it's easily available at most stores and even with there being somewhat of a paint shortage I'm still available to get it but I do like this and I think that maybe for some jobs that I have coming up I have an exterior cabinet and an outdoor kitchen that I'll probably use command on but for all other circumstances I generally would prefer to stick with a water-based lacquer And here's the final dresser. Thanks for watching.